How's it going everyone? Ben Hasin here, your internet doctor dad that cares about you. And uh, it has been officially a week since I got my wisdom teeth removal. The first day I am off of painkillers. Also, I don't know if y'all noticed, but my eyelid here is swollen and I have no idea why. Last night I couldn't go to sleep for some reason, even though I took melatonin. I went to bed at like five and then um, sometime around 3 a.m. I got up to pee and looked at myself in the mirror and this eye was super, super swollen. I've been adding hot compresses, but I don't know why my eye is swollen. It's unilateral, so I'm not too concerned. I'm probably thinking I scratched my eyelid or something and, um, and it's causing an inflammatory reaction, but, uh, I am going through it this morning. I ended up, um, having to wake up really early for a meeting. The person saw my swollen eye, it was a business meeting, and then... I had to rest for an hour and then go to another business meeting where I had to explain myself again. And then I was like, okay, I'll just sleep for another hour. So it's finally 2.30 and I'm up for the day. So yeah, it's been a day. What, 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 what is going on with me? Like I, I might be dying. I might be actively dying. But if you keep up with my content last week, I uh, posted the video on bromelain and wisdom teeth removal and the week before you all saw my prepping for wisdom teeth removal vlog but today I am officially a week after um, having my surgical procedure done uh, not super super happy about it I'm gonna be honest because um, my pain course has been really hard to deal with I've been in pain a lot they put stitches on this uh, lower jaw because uh, it was infected, which I kind of knew about. I've been dealing with that. That was the that was the bad one uh, for the last couple of years. And I've just been in pain and not being able to sleep. I'm still not completely over <coughs> this thing. <laughs> it's been three weeks now. Um, four? Four weeks. It's been about a month. But I think it's a, a case of allergic bronchitis that can last up to six weeks. So, um your boy is still going through it mentally though your boy is a lot better um yeah but uh besides all of that today i'm actually going to be preparing din din for two of my friends they're a couple it's a cute couple um my friends rukata and maya and um i'm hoping to be making them this delicious viral sensation dinner it's like this brie spaghetti linguine thing i will show y'all when i make it <coughs> but uh yeah let's get started for the day start cleaning up my space i need to clean up the uh, coffee table right here uh, make the kitchen a little bit more presentable and um fold my clothes and we we should uh, get at least a part of it done just finished um... all right y'all I just finished uh, cleaning everything everything looks great I'm heating up some um, crispy battered fish right now as a, like a little snack before I have to start cooking but the entire apartment is so clean and I'm happy also the swelling went down a little bit because I've been adding warm compresses to it so it looks a lot better than when, uh, how I was this morning. Dang, I felt so self-conscious. Uh, but uh, the day is getting better and better and hopefully I'll get some good sleep tonight. So this completely vegetarian recipe for spaghetti is actually really, really easy. I'm saying spaghetti wrong. It's technically like a fettuccine kind of thing. But all you really do is you use uh, room temperature brie you use basil and tomatoes, olive oil, salt and pepper, the usual. And while you you put it in a bowl, mix it together. And then when the spaghetti is cooked all the way through, you just mix it in. And it's absolutely full on delicious. I highly recommend that y'all try it out because, oh my God, I've made this at least three times now. I really can't eat this by myself because as you all know, I'm team low carb. So I usually have to invite friends over to prepare this dish. And um, I learned it from a really famous Instagram Reels video. And 
I've just been following it ever since. One thing that I do want to mention is that the recipe originally called for garlic pieces cut up, raw garlic pieces cut up and added to the bowl. And then when I first made it, the garlic was just way too strong. That garlic either needs to be cooked, which is a lot of work, or I thought of a great idea this time around. What I decided to do is I added powdered garlic powder into the into my water for making the fettuccine. So I just added salt and garlic powder into the boiling water before I put in the noodles. And surprisingly, it did a pretty great job of seasoning the noodles really well. So then when we ate the noodles, it was absolutely slightly garlicky and very, very cheesy without the garlic being super, super overpowering and stinging my throat. Hey y'all, so we just finished dinner. They just went home, but we spent three hours together. I can't believe we spent that much time, but it was so fun catching up with them. They're about to move to um, Washington, D.C. Um, and, you know, it's going to be uh, less and less frequent that I see them. But this was the brie spaghetti, and they absolutely loved it. It was so, so good. And look at this. I made an entire bowl and it's almost completely finished. Like literally no leftovers. So I think uh, I think tonight's dinner was an absolute success and I didn't have to eat all of that spaghetti even though I love this dish. It makes so many portions and totally kills my low carb <coughs> lifestyle. And also I had some really nice wine to go with it. So I'm not complaining. It was a great night. It was so successful. Thursday night was party night? What? Oh my God, but tomorrow I gotta wake up early, pick up my lab order form and get my drug testing done for uh, my uh, Duke onboard credentialing. So, uh, and after that, hopefully, um, the week is gonna be pretty chill. Oh my God, y'all, it is Friday and I just got back from getting um, drug tested and getting my Mac Studio. <laughs> From the Apple Store, I am so, so happy. Uh, I took a lot of detours during this journey in the morning. One, CVS's printer was out, so they never printed my lab orders. So then I had to run over to a UPS, pay for them to print out my lab orders. Then I had to drive to my uh, drug testing area, and that was fine. And then for some reason, uh, when I went to the Apple Store at Lenox Mall, I guess I've never been there, but it is the most trippy Black Mirror-esque Apple Store I've ever been to. Um, and they had like weird little cubicles and off office, like, like just reminded me of like Black Mirror in a sense. And everybody at the Apple Store is just so interesting. <laughs> I really felt like I was in like, um, post-apocalyptic movie situation. But then like this woman approached me at the mall and I'm pretty sure she was hitting on me, but it was like the weirdest way anyone's have ever hit on me. I actually posted it on my Instagram story, but I'll post the whole saga right now. Y'all, literally the funniest shit happened. So I went to the Apple store just now to pick up my new Mac Studio. It's a graduation gift for myself, um, but Tell me why. Okay, so while I was leaving the Apple store with the Mac Studio, I don't know why Apple doesn't give me a bag to hide what I am carrying because it is expensive and I could get mugged, but whatever. Um, so I'm walking at Lenox Mall back to my car and there's like this girl, like maybe around my age, who approaches me and then she hands me something and it's like... Hand so then... Um, she proceeds to ask me questions. Mind you, she didn't hand me the hand lotion to sell me anything. Like she, she was literally like walking around the mall and she's like, how old are you? And I say, I'm 26. And she starts nodding her head and says, very nice. <laughs> I kid you not, <laughs> y'all. And then um, she starts asking me where I'm from, what I do for a living. And it's like back to back questions. And she's saying it with such a straight face and like nodding to things and like, doing this to something else and then she's like okay thank you and then walks away so i don't i feel like she was 
that that was like the weirdest interview that I had because I think she was interviewing me to be a potential romantic candidate and it was hilarious. What made her uninterested is that she asked me where I'm from and I said I was from Bangladesh and she was like, I don't know where that is. And I told her it's in from like the Indian subcontinent area. <coughs> And she immediately got uninterested and left the conversation. So, I think she likes brown boys, but not the ones from Asia. So yeah, that was my morning. I am going to change into more comfortable clothes and then prep my chicken biryani marinade tomorrow. I'm going to an iftar party. Um, so, my my, res my the dish that I'm going to bring is chicken biryani. So, uh, if y'all have not, had never had it, you absolutely should. It's one of my favorite South Asian dishes. And... Unboxing this Mac Studio is gonna have to take a little bit of a back seat because I still need to back up everything that I need to back up from my main computer and then get this bad boy going. Okay, now I'm ready to make the biryani for iftar. So I'm gonna use two different types of flavors of biryani for this recipe. I saw my mom do it and it actually ended up really, really tasty. So I'm gonna use the Sean Cindy biryani packet as my first packet and the second one I'm gonna use the Sean Bombay biryani packet. If you're gonna ask me, Ben, what are the difference between the two? Honestly, I don't really know. I'm not that good about the different types of biryani that exist. I just know that the Bombay biryani and is a little bit spicier and tends to go better with red meats, but I am using chicken for this recipe. I think it's still gonna come out pretty well. Then I'm gonna add some ginger garlic paste. This is a brand new container of ginger garlic paste. So uh, when I was trying to film this, I was actually struggling quite a bit to open this jar. It took me like five minutes and I was huffing and puffing ne near the end. But you know what? Your boy managed to do it in the very end. Then I'm gonna add some paste, chunky salsa to it. You're gonna be like, what? Why are you adding that? Well, the traditional biryani recipe calls for tomatoes, but I like to add a little bit of paste picante salsa to any recipe that calls for tomatoes. I just think it adds a little bit more flavor and a little bit of uh, umami sweetness. And of course, you gotta add whole milk yogurt to biryani recipes and lots of other Southeast Asian recipes and, and South Asian recipes because uh, whole milk yogurt just makes it oh so creamy and delicious and tenderizes the meat as we marinate it overnight. So I add this whole full fat plain yogurt into the bowl and that's basically it for the marinade. I just whisk it all together and it's ready. And check out how much chicken thighs I got for this recipe. Nine pounds of chicken thighs from Costco, but we're gonna debone and skin this y'all. We can do it. All right, y'all, I'm so proud of myself. It took about an hour, but I just finished deboning and uh, skinning almost nine pounds of chicken thighs. And look at how much chicken we're gonna put in this chicken biryani dish. This is so good because it's gonna be able to like eight people at the queer iftar dinner so this will keep bellies full i am so excited it's gonna go in the fridge for about 24 hours and then tomorrow i'm gonna cook it before heading over there check out this clean fit y'all i'm about to head out um to go get some banh mis with a friend and then go to her little um uh, side sidewalk market sale she's trying to raise some funds uh because currently she's looking for a new job but last night after making the oh he always tries to get on top of this cat tree whenever i try to use the cat tree as a tripod but last night after making the biryani john luke Last night, after making the biryani marinade, uh, I ended up going to Henderson Park near Tucker, Georgia. And uh, surprisingly, Henderson Park has a waterfall. So me and my friends went on like this birthday hike for a friend of mine. And then they showed me the route and there is an actual waterfall within driving distance, within like 15 miles of inner city Atlanta, which is wild to me. And it was absolutely beautiful. Um, I took some shots over there. Um, wore my Adidas boost shoes when I should have worn my designated hiking shoes, which I bought specifically for hiking. But maybe that's um, a judgment that I didn't make very well, but it was super fun. And then right after the hike, I went over and had dinner with a community member who's been following my journey in healthcare. And they and it's um, it's been inspiring them to continue their journey of becoming a nurse one day. 
and we had a great time. They actually made me something which I absolutely adore when either friends or community members, fans, make me stuff and uh, send them to me. So the reason why I even scheduled this dinner is because they made me a little gift to, um, to kind of commemorate my match at Duke. And I, they just wanted to drop it off and I thought that was like, they did something so nice. I think they deserve like <clears throat> some time to hang out. So um, it's just um, the nice thing to do. So I invited them over to dinner uh, at Seo Kong Dong Tofu House at uh, on Buford Highway. If you ever visit Atlanta, you'll know about the famous Buford Highway uh, food strip. And uh, Seo Kong Dong is a place where I haven't gone before and they uh, specifically specialize in Korean uh, tofu soups. So I got the um, tofu mushroom soup and then we got a bunch of banchan and some Korean pancakes. It was absolutely delicious. But after dinner, I came home and um, they gave me my gift and it came in this really cute envelope. They're so creative. I mean like... <laughs> I am just so impressed by them. Um, they're gonna be a healthcare worker and they're just so good at all this other stuff. So we're gonna open it up. I already know what's in here, but I think y'all will think this is like the coolest thing ever. If I take my time open it. So. But it is a wooden plaque that they painted and look at this. Isn't this amazing? Hold on, y'all need to get the full view. So it is my face on a jar of Duke's mayonnaise. <laughs> and it says Duke, psych. Isn't that so cool? Like I just, oh my God. I, this makes me so, so happy. This is gonna, um, I'm gonna probably put some mounting tape on here and mount it somewhere in my future apartment um, when I moved to Durham. But oh my God, this, <laughs> I'm like getting emotional, but this is so, so cool. Thank you so much. You know who you are, um, who made this. Oh, my heart. <laughs> All right, y'all, it's been 24 hours since the chicken has been marinating, so I'm ready to start frying it down. And look at this, it looks so, so good, but I am in a bit of a time crunch. I have only about two hours to cook it, and I realize that this recipe is gonna call for a lot. Okay, so I have about an hour <laughs> to make this, and I just realized I have way too much chicken to make in a pan. So uh, we're gonna need to do it both two ways. So. Uh, part of the chicken is going to be super, super juicy um, and have a lot of roux, which is what I want for the biryani. So that's the roux portion of the chicken. And then the other chicken, I'm just going to cook and then put in the casserole. And that's going to be made in the Instant Pot, just so that I'm a little bit faster. I think I girl bossed a little too hard. Um, so let's hope I make it in time. This might be the first time y'all ever see me panic cook because I'm trying to make it in time but I also realized I might have way too much food for just one dish. So, and yeah, uh, this is on max setting right now. Um, so I got two different dishes. So hopefully uh, that will cover all the food that I'm making. So good news, we just heard, we just realized that iftar is gonna be at 8.10 today because the days are getting longer as we're going closer and closer to the summer. So when Ramadan first started, it was usually around 7.30, because, but now that it's um, around eight, I think I'm going to be done and at the place by the time I need to be there. So, your boy is doing it. Oh my God, this was so hectic. And it couldn't get even better for me because just as soon as all the chicken is done, the oven is ready and the rice is ready. So all I have to do is layer on the rice, put it in the oven for 30 minutes, and while it's in the oven, get ready and head on out. So after making the biryani, I went to the uh, queer iftar and we had an absolute great time. People loved the biryani. The rice was a little undercooked and I think um, we're just not going to acknowledge it because I worked so hard on that biryani in such a small time frame. And um, the, chicken, the chicken was absolutely delicious. Like, oh my God, so, so tender. And uh, even though I made so much of it, a whole, one of the containers got completely eaten and the other container I'm gonna have 
for leftovers and to give uh, as leftovers to other people uh, in my community. And it was such a beautiful, 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 beautiful night. And and I got to have some of my favorite, favorite deserts of all time, kanafe. If you don't know what kanafe is, I discovered it last year from my Palestinian friend who is actually host of the queer iftar dinner. And it's literally a um, cheesy, gooey, sweet, delicious. I can't even describe it, but it, it's so, so tasty. Um, find a Palestinian store near you uh, or a Middle Eastern store and see if kanafe is on the menu because you have to have to try it. Um, uh, <coughs> my friend made three giant um, plates of kanafe and I feel like at that party last night I ate like 50% of it. I liked it so much my friend uh, took me some, um, took, uh, gave me some to take home and uh, I was gonna save it till the next day, but it w when I went home at 3 a.m., I actually had that as my late night snack before going to bed. I'm eating late night kanafa. Mmm. Mm. And then finally, at the end of the week on Sunday, I celebrated my friend Shimon's birthday. It, it's been a really, really busy week, y'all. Um, and Shimon is a is a writer, a creative writer, and also loves to read. And one of their favorite authors, Chitra Banerjee, uh, Diva Kumar, I think that's her name. She was over at Emory University to do a book event. We went. Um, she is such an adorable woman. She is so cute. Oh my god, I'm so glad I went because I I, have, I don't really read a lot. I'm just so busy doing everything else. I just don't have time to read. But she was able to weave this beautiful story. Her newest book, Independence, is out. I'll probably put the Amazon affiliate link down below if you want to check it out. But it's a story of three sisters, but uh, it's overlying the partition of India. <coughs> it's overlying the partition. Um, it's it's overlying the partition of the Indian subcontinent region back in the early 1900s. I, this is a part of his, my own history that I actually don't know a lot about. I am Bengali, I'm from the East Bengal region, and this book really centers on the Bengali experience during the, uh, part, during the times of partition and the rising conflicts between Hindus and Muslims in that area. And uh, I, this is a, a little bit of a sore spot for me, but I actually don't know a lot about my own family history, my own cultural history, because I don't know if many of y'all know this, but Bangladesh is one of the newest countries in the world that's been created. We gained our independence pretty late into the uh, 20th century. So a lot of my um, ancestors past my grandparents, my grandparents were part of the war for independence, I lost a lot of family members that I don't know and also because of all that trauma during war times my family doesn't even talk about our family history just because there's just so much hurt and pain there so that that's a part of my life and my heritage that I'll never get to really know about so being there and learning a little bit about my history that's often not in the textbooks here in America it just made uh, a world of a difference. Anyways, y'all, that's the end of this vlog. I hope it's not too long. I'll find out once I'm done editing it. But uh, I want to say that I know the last vlog, I was a, it was a bit more somber. But this weekend, I realized um, I'm doing okay. And I'm doing great. And I'm an amazing person. And we're going we're gonna to make it. So I'm really happy to share that journey with you. Anyways, I love y'all. Have a good, what day is it today? Have a good Monday morning um, or whatever day that you're watching this. And uh, I'll see y'all in the next vlog. Mwah. This is Dr. Ben.